Robert. Same boy.
provide in this place to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Indeed, we do thank the Lord for allowing us to travel over 295 to make it over here to the Freedom Baptist Church. And thank the Lord for the leadership and the assignment of this Freedom Church. Thank God for all of the men here at Freedom and who we're celebrating and honoring on this Lord's Day. Come on, you can get the men of Freedom Church. We do indeed honor past Reverend Reverend Carlos Younger. We thank God for Reverend Carlos Younger. I'm here this afternoon because of our relationship and thank God that sometimes the Lord will place people in your life. You'll get connected to them along the journey. And you had no idea in the very beginning that you would get connected in such a way that it would uh, turn into a wonderful friendship. And indeed, I thank God for our friendship uh, musically. And now, uh, as it relates to the ministry, we thank God Amen. for that. Uh, to those of you from Greater Harvest Church who came on over this afternoon, thank you so much. I, I told uh, Reverend uh, Younger that I would make sure that we bring a van and I'd at least have at least a piece of van for but I didn't realize that a few others would get in their cars and drive on over as well. And so we thank God for each and every last one of you guys. I do not take your presence for granted on this afternoon. But I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here with us on this afternoon to support this great Men's Day celebration. Amen. 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 Brother Jefferson, let me know a little secret that his sister is here visiting with us this afternoon. May God bless you. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. Amen. Many of my Christian friends who are gathered under this umbrella of household of faith. Indeed, the Lord is good. It is good that we are gathered this afternoon to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. Grab your Bibles. Meet me at the book of Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3. When you get there, scroll down to verse 21. Yeah. Lamentations chapter 3. When you get there, scroll down to verse 21. I love Jesus. Yes, Yes, I do. I don't know about you this afternoon, but I love Jesus. Do you love him? Do you love him? Yet again, this I recall to my mind. 
therefore have I hope. I want to tag this text sermonically this afternoon using this thought, looking back in order to look up. Looking back in order to look up. That the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Thank you, God, for being our strength and our redeemer. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And together the people of God said, Amen. 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 Looking back in order to look up. It is the prophet Jeremiah who takes time to pen. This book of Lamentations. Well. Expressing the sentiments of his heart, if you will. Jeremiah is expressing how it is he feels concerning the destruction of the Jerusalem temple. Mm. He takes pen to pad and write what I would consider, Brother Dwayne, Jeremiah's personal diary. He's expressing the sentiments of his heart. He's expressing his emotions. Yeah. And when you read these of oh, this book, these lamentations is what they actually are. You receive his cries. Yes. You receive Jeremiah's tears, if you will. Yeah. So Jeremiah, chapter one, chapter two, and the beginning portion of chapter three. Really isn't feeling so well concerning everything that has been happening in the land. Well, he begins to express himself concerning the destruction of the temple and how the gates have been lying in ruins. Yeah. yeah. How they were one time so beautiful. How the temple of God was so wonderful and so matchless. And now all of it is destroyed. Has yeah. now become rubbish. Yeah. Jeremiah is expressing himself about all of this. And I don't contend that it's not simply because Jeremiah was so enthused about a church building, if you will. Well. But Jeremiah understood what the church building represented. Yeah. But I contend, my brother and my sister, that we should never be so attracted to the building to an edifice, if you will. Well, However, you and I should recognize, honor, and pay homage to what the building represents. Well, I lift that this afternoon because oftentimes we find ourselves in places where we get so emotionally attached to a seat. Yeah. We find ourselves in places sometimes where we get so emotionally attached to uh, particular areas of a building. You uh, know, we have our favorite portions of the building. You uh, know, we like prayer rooms. Yeah. We like to name certain edifices after individuals. But I would contend that it's not about the building itself. Uh, but about what the building represents. Uh, and I will contend that this is why Jeremiah is so grievous. It's why Jeremiah is so upset. Because he understands not just the care of the building, but why we are caring for the building. He understands not just why you and I come to the building, but he understands the God who has blessed us to come to this place yes. to give him glory and honor. Yes. And because of all of this destruction, because it has all fell apart, because of everything that is happening in the land, Jeremiah is expressing himself. And you do know, my brother and my sister, that there's nothing wrong with expressing yourself. Yes. Some of us need to take some time out and express ourselves. After all, you and I sometimes find ourselves holding things in that we oftentimes need to let out. This is what Jeremiah is doing. He's releasing himself of his anguish, of his pain, of all that has happened to the building, to the body, to the, 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 the edifice, to the temple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jeremiah expresses himself, and he, he does so in a wonderful poetic fashion. Until Jeremiah begins to 
enter towards the ending of this third chapter of Lamentation. Mm -hmm. Because as he began to conclude this third chapter, Jeremiah began to awaken to another light, if you will. Yeah. Jeremiah began to express himself in a different manner. Yeah, yeah. All because Jeremiah does something that would cause him not to stay grieved. Uh, All because Jeremiah does something that would cause him not to remain in a spirit of lamenting, if you will. Okay. Listen again at what Jeremiah says he does that would lift his downtrodden spirit into a spirit of hope-filled bliss. This I recall to my mind. Uh, yeah. Therefore have I hope. Oh, yeah. This I recall to my mind. Now I've got some hope. Yes, sir. I thought about some things right. that would shift my hopeless spirit into a spirit of hope-filled bliss. Yeah. I thought about some things that would begin to shift my cries into a spirit of excitement. I, I thought about some things that would begin to shift my lonely heart into a spirit of looking towards the hills from what cometh my help. Yeah. Jeremiah says, this I recall to my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I got some hope. Yeah. Jeremiah begins to think about the right stuff that would cause his mind to shift from being lowly and downtrodden into being hopeful and excited. Jeremiah begins to pull from the back of his mind, walking down the corridors of his memory bank to the forefront of his mind so that in terms his spirit can now be lifted up. This I recall to my mind, now I've got some hope. I stopped at Freedom Baptist Church on this Sunday afternoon to remind somebody of the sound of my voice that there are times in you and I life where you and I have got to pull some things to the forefront of our mind that will cause us not to stay where we are, but will cause us to look up and move on.
Yeah. <laughs> 
just start all over again tomorrow. Y'all, 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 y
us men to live. That's the word God's put us to. That's how we call them. That's what we call them. It is in the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because our compassion is not. 